Hey guys, um, yet again, more clears on the Fort Vorn. Um, I'm just trying to do as many clears as possible with different team variations. So at some point, some of you can get an idea of what you need to clear this. Now this one is going to be um, going lower end than usual. Uh, so we're going to have to do two different clears. We're going to do the first clear with just um, eight turns and no KOs. And we're going to come back for the four-man party. So we're going to use this team to get an all-mission or a two out of three mission clear in, and then we'll come back and drop a unit for the re-clear. So this is gonna be Slime and Terra carrying the fight. So, this also kind of, sort of, almost does need Kryla EX3 as well, because we're gonna be using Calamity Concoction most waves for an AOE 88% all break, and then an AOE um, 120 in peril which is kind of a big deal. So Kryla is going to do that. Aerith is going to, for this first turn, just Ardent Prayer for the Fire Amp. Terra is going to go ahead and put up that Fire Field, which is going to last for the remainder of the encounter. And then Slime is going to triple. We're going to even deeper and double Scorch. And we're going to go ahead and send that off with Biggs and Wedge to AoE Quad Attack Tag Chain. And that handles the first wave. So that is one out of our eight turns handled. Um, this this even this event is pretty pretty simple for the, for the machine waves. It's only really the final or the the undead wave that gives me a big headache. Uh, so on this one, we're gonna go ahead and use Biggs and Wedge to do both their cooldowns. That's a good magic cover, but more importantly, it's an AOE 75% general mitigation. We're gonna use Terra to Golem this turn. That's 70% physical mitigation. Uh, these enemies do dark and lightning damage. Our tank is dark immune, but not lightning immune. So we're going to do geyser shock for lightning resist. We're going to again do calamity. And we're going to do eyes of Argus just for a mana regen. Uh, now Aerith is going to quad attack. We're going to do ardent prayer for the amp. Wish to save the planet for a machine killer, but more importantly a rod in peril. And we're going to double flame fang to tag chain. This time, Slime is going to use both his Deep Breath power-ups and then Scorch. Now we're going to target the big guy, we're going to click Aerith, and then like a second later we're going to click Slime. That's going to cap the first of Slime's cast. Now this is not the big damage turn, this is just going to deal a little bit of damage. Well it did 40% almost, which is fine. Now here's the magical damage that we're um, covering, and we have big mitigations, so that handled that. Uh, so Kryla... This turn is going to just Curega to top off the damage we took. We're going to use Aerith to do her LB just for a, um, a stat buff. And now Slime can triple, and we can triple Scorch, and we can send our Biggs and Wedge to Tag Chain with that. Now that's going to be a powered up Scorch, so at this point, yeah, the enemies are dead. Big time dead, not a problem. On the other hand, here comes the fight. That is going to be a problem. This is going to be the undead fight, and it's a little bit obnoxious. I don't like this fight at all. <laughs> this is why this one gives me headaches. So we're going to use Terra to him to the faith for a um, boost to evocation damage. That might not be required if you don't have Yuna's, Yuna's necklace. Um, if you don't have that, uh, it's probably fine without it. I didn't actually test, and I probably should at some point. But um, you know, for this clear, we are using it. Uh, now these enemies do fire and ice damage, so we're going to use Kryla to Ember Shock for the resistance, uh, and then we're going to Eyes and Calamity. Aerith is going to Quad, we're going to Ardent, Wish to Save the Planet, Shelga, and Protectga. We're going to do all kind of buffs this turn. Biggs and Wedge, again, are going to use their big mitigations, both of them. And then Slime is going to triple. We're going to both the cooldowns and then Scorch. Okay, so this is going to be some magic damage that we're going to be covering, but it's also going to be some physical damage, which is going to be kind of painful, but more importantly, the fixed damage. But we've got 75% mitigation and 88% break, so the fixed damage should be fine, even though our Slime is not really stat potted. There you go. No problem at all. So we're going to use Kryla here to double cast Curega just to top off the party again because we did take some hits. Um, Aerith is going to LB. We're going to shift Terra and her LB. Now she's going to basically solo the big undead guy while Slime is going to triple Scorch. 
with Biggs and Wedge, and that's going to take out the little guys. Okay, so the way we're going to do this, we're going to send Aerith and Red first to give Terra those big LB buffs. Then we're going to like immediately afterwards click Terra. Then we're going to wait like a second and a half because Terra is really, really slow. And then we're going to use Biggs and Wedge and Slime, which is then going to cap Terra on the big guy. That's going to take him out very safely. And then it's going to have Slime kill the little guys. So this, this, wait, 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 send the others. And that should be the end of this wave. And then Terra is going to be coming in the big hit. There's Terra. Yeah, Terra handles the big guy. Um, there it is. Okay, so next is the final wave. So we're currently at one, two, and two turns. Five turns total, giving us the full three turns available for this fight. This one's a little tricky as well. So we're going to go ahead and use Slime to SLB. That's a big modifier boost for his Scorch. Because this guy's a little bulky. Terror has already done her big burst. She can't really help again. I guess you could, could technically refill Terror with, like, Entrust and stuff. But we, we do have to set up for survival on this turn as well. Now, this enemy does a lot of AoE physical damage. So we're going to, once again, Golem. We're going to go ahead and use Biggs and Wedge to both their cooldowns for that 75% general mitigation and magical cover. Um, Kryla, there's no elemental damage this turn, so we're just going to use Kryla to Calamity, Eyes, and Soul Surge. Uh, Aerith is going to Quadruple. We're going to Ardent, Wish to Save, Shelga, and Protectka. Make sure you're targeting the, the main body. Okay, so there's going to be a bunch of physical damage this turn. Um, it's it's sort of a little kind of painful, but uh, we do have Golem up and 75% mitigation from Biggs and Wedge. Uh, we're passive provoking with Terra. When I said it was kind of really painful, I kind of kind of overstated it. It really wasn't that bad. Um, anyway, we're still going to keep powering up though. So Slime is now going to both his cooldowns or his power ups and then Scorch. Aerith will go ahead and use her LB. That's going to give us nice big stat buffs. Kryla can just Curega, or you could double cast Curega. We don't really need to double cast though. Uh, and Terra, um, on this turn, doesn't really have anything to do here. I guess I could have given her like um, uh, Thousand Needles or something, but you know, whatever. So we're gonna go ahead and do this, and this is gonna get some more power ups. So we don't have Gold on this turn, but we do have Protect a plus two. Uh, but we do, have, we do still have 75% general mitt from um, Biggs and Wedge. So there are some attacks. Um, kind of painful. Really painful. I definitely should have given uh, 100 needles or 1,000 needles to Terra. Also, keep in mind, my slime is only magic potted. He has no pots at all for, MP, for HP or spirit or defense. So if your slime is having survivability problems, um, go ahead and stat pot all of his stats. But technically, I didn't really need to. Anyway, at this point, Slime is fully and entirely powered up. So we are good to go. And this is the last turn for the mission. So, but yeah, we've got his SLB buffs, his Deep Breath buffs. And now we're going to be triple casting. And there we go. We killed the body on the second cast. The third cast was overkill. I don't want to actually finish this off just yet. So, yep, we had no KOs and we had an eight turn clear. So there's the eight turn clear. Now we're gonna go ahead and drop a unit and come back in with um, a little bit of a slower clear, but four units to get the remainder of those missions. So let me adjust the team and see you in a moment. All right, guys, I actually forgot to show the gear. So we're gonna pop back over real quick to show the gear from that party. Um, now the big thing with the gear in this party is uh, basically stop immunity. That's gonna be the hang up that some people have uh, that they just can't gear for. Now, if you can't gear everyone for stop immunity, um, you can use a buff. I just hate using, like, an entire turn to buff immunity from, like, Lakshmi or something. But it is an option if you just have no other way to get stop immunity. Um, but we're using gear for it. So let's go ahead and show the gear we're using. Now, Kryla does need to be EX3 for her special buff. I did mention that during the clear. If you don't have EX3 Kryla... Um, some other good AoE Spirit Breakers are like the LB of Jesse or the LB of Cacteria. Uh, these are AoE 87%. They're obviously not as good as an AoE 88% because, you know, stat passives are a zero on this fight. And the bigger break is a really big deal. But, you know, if you don't have the X3 Kryla, well, you know, you don't have her. 
Uh, now we gave her the Tome of Lakshmi and Holy Wand. That gives her dual cast and Curega, so she can heal. If you don't have the Tome of Lakshmi, you could give her, um, like, a Curega spell from an Esper or something. It'll be basically the same thing. We just need someone to top off the party between waves, and that, that's an easy way to do it. Uh, other than that, technically she's got evasion. Um, we don't really need evasion on the party because my unpotted janky slime had no evasion at all. Very low defenses. And he survived technically fine. He did dip low one turn, but um, he was fine. Uh, so all this evasion I geared on the rest of the party was super overkill. But I did gear for it, so blah. There it is. Full evasion, and there's Kryla. She was basically just a breaker uh, and a resist buffer. Um, Descendant Aerith... Uh, she's getting stop immunity from Super Ribbon. Uh, and by the way, Kryla has stop immunity naturally if she's wearing her TMR or STMR. So she has natural stop immunity. Uh, Super Ribbon's giving her stop immunity. She's doing Rod and Peril, Stat Buff, Machine Killer, and Fire Amplify. A um, little bit of Esper Fill uh, and some, some Mana Regen. And yeah, again, I, I went overboard with, with the evasion. You don't really need all that evasion. On the other hand, your Provoker does need Evasion. So Terra in the base form is our Passer Provoke Evasion unit. Stop Immunity from the Grand Reverie. This is 5-star Adele's STMR. Uh, Yuna's Necklace, probably optional. I didn't try without it, but that, that's probably overkill. I don't actually know. You know, you can try without it if it works great. If not, eh, I don't know. Um, so here's her build. Shift form is pure damage. Now we needed her to carry the third fight because that, that undead fight is just annoying. Um, so she is pure evil. Okay, she is not passive provoking in the shift form, but that's okay because the first turn of the, the fourth fight doesn't really need passive provoke. It's all AOE. Um, yeah, so there is that, and then she'll be back in the base form of the turn after and provoking again. So here's um, here's her build. Now she is geared best in slot, so this is this might be hard to build as well. Uh, literally maxed on everything, 300, 300, 300, um, and she carries that fight. She also does golem on a few turns, and she does. Uh, um, the fire field, which persists for the entire encounter. So make sure someone is on Ifrit and someone is on Golem for Terror to summon those. And someone can be on Lakshmi as well for an AoE healing if you need to, but we use Kryla as our healer. Biggs and Wedge need, um, after a buff, you want about 100 ice, f ice, fire, lightning, and dark. I was actually short on Dark Resist. I thought I had 100%. I guess I didn't. It didn't really matter, but Ice and Fire are the big ones. Because the third the third fight uses Ice and Fire magic, and those kind of hurt. And the third fight is by far the most dangerous. Um, so they're our Provoker. They're getting stop immunity from the Vitrium Ribbon, which is from Trials of Mana. Uh, they're, again, full evasion. Um, oh, and they're provoking too, actually. So, blah, whatever. Uh, and I gave them some... I, they had like 50% evasion, so that's, you know, something. So there it is. And they're dual wielding with quad attack and using a multi-element weapon so they can support chain. And they're getting quad attack from Aurora Scarf and then equip staff and dual wield from Tetra Synergy. Uh, and then Slime. Slime is the big carry here. Make sure he is stat potted. Make sure his magic is door potted. Make sure he is fully enhanced or at least his power-up skills are enhanced. And he can carry the fight. Now, he is using the, the Alina card, which, you know, some of you may not have. Very, very understandable. Um, it's kind of a big deal because it gives lots of uh, lots of killers. and Not killers. It gives lots of chain cap up, dual wield, you know, etc. Really good for this fight. D dual wielding rods for the synergy with Aerith. Uh, stop immunity from Starlight's Dress. And then other than that, oh, status immunity from Creole Scrunchie. Um, a lot of Machine Killer and Scorch. And then I showed you the card. Uh, yeah, they're the Machine Killers. So Terra takes care of the Undead fight. And then they, this guy takes care of the Machine fight. So 300 Magical Machine Killer and 50 Magical Undead Killer to help out with the little babies on the uh, the third wave. And that was the the eight turn clear using Slime and Terra. So now let me adjust the team and we'll do a four unit clear. See you in a moment. Alright guys, now we're going to be going back for that four unit clear um, without really sweating the turn limit. So uh, the team is going to be mostly similar, but we have dropped um, we have dropped the slime terror combo and we're going with just Titus instead. 
So let's get in here and knock this out, and then of course I will show the gear and all the funsies after that. So um, this first wave is super simple, as we know, so we're just going to Calamity. We're going to uh, Ardent Prayer for the Fire Imbue, and we'll just use Titus to LB, normal LB. Take it out. Pretty simple. Yeah, not really much to say about this wave. Okay. All right, um, we're gonna just, uh, we'll just guard Titus this turn. We will, whoops. We will, let's see, give it a bit more time, but we could have done more with him. We're going to, let, whoops, <laughs> lightning resist. Uh, Eyes of Argus and Calamity with Kryla. And then Aerith will Ardent, Wish, Shelga, and Protectga. Okay. So turn one, not much going on here. And now we're going to have the SLB of Titus on this turn. So we can use Kryla to just top off the party with Curega. Aerith will LB, then we will LB Titus. It's really slow, so we're going to give it a moment, then we're going to send our tag chainers. And there is that wave. Next up is going to be the... Um, the undead wave, which is... Everyone loves the undead wave. Not really. Okay, so. Uh, turn one, we're just going to guard Titus. We're going to do our usual mitigations with this guy. Uh, Kryla will fire an ice resist. We're going to Calamity, and we're going to Eyes of Argus for mana regen. And then Aerith will do her thing again. Shelga, Protectga, uh, Machine Killer, and Ardent Prayer. So turn one is the big fixed attack. Thankfully, though, we have lost our slime, and Titus is much bulkier, so this would be a lot safer. Again, we are using stop immunity on everyone. Titus is using the Grand Reverie for stop immunity. Okay, so we're going to use Titus to just cap here. Um, we'll use Aerith to do that, do this, do this. And it's going ahead and just do a little bit of bonus damage here. The real damage obviously comes next turn with the SLB. Kryla can Curega. Okay, so the boss is going to do some physical stuff with accuracy on our Provoker. Today our Provoker is Kryla. Um, and she is using... Uh, she still has the mitigation from the previous turn. So Kryla can just do that. Um, and then, let's see, does anyone need mana? Not really. So we'll just do this, we'll do this, we'll wait, 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 and then send Biggs and Wedge. And the SLB will take out the rest of the undead guy. So there we go. So we're up to six turns. As you can see, we're not going to get the eight turn clear, but we already did that, so that is okay. Next up is the, um, the Robot Bro. So Titus will just guard this turn, to be honest here. Uh, we're going to mitigate with our Biggs and Wedge. Aerith will just put up the full suite of buffs with um, Shelga, Protectga, Imbue, Machine Killer, Kryla will do... We don't need resistances, so we'll just do Eyes of Argus. Um, we don't really need Eyes of Argus either, honestly. How, what is how much is the Malicious Curse? That's a big... Yeah, it's an 85. That's fine. So we're going to Calamity. We're going to Eyes. And I guess... Whoop, whoop, whoop. Misclicks for the win. So we're going to Eyes, Calamity, and Soul Surge. All right, get this going. So some physical damage, we've got mitigations, not really a big deal, Titus is guarding, you know, all that fun stuff. Yeah, yeah, low damage. Unfortunately, we got broken, that's kind of annoying to be honest here. Um, you know what we can do? We can we can handle that break with Kryla. Kryla can steal, uh, remove attack reduction from all allies. That's very nice. Let's Calamity Brew and Impending Doom just for have something to do. Let's go ahead and LB here with Aerith for that big buff. Let's tend the Tag Chainers, and it will normal LB with Titus. Unfortunately, there goes the eight-turn clear mission, but again, that isn't that big a deal. We're fine. We're going to get the SLB next turn. Now, because I prioritized um, Magic, or Undead Killer, we actually might not even kill this turn either. It's very possible we don't kill this turn. Um, so we're going to go ahead and use the SLB on Titus. We're going to give it a moment because it takes forever. And go ahead and send this up. The arms are definitely going to die, but it's very likely the body, of course, did not die, as expected. 
It's not a problem. We'll go ahead and Curega here. Um, and then Aerith will... Uh, we don't really need anything. I guess we'll just Golem here, because why not? The boss does do physical damage sometimes. We still have 75% mitigation, so we're fine, regardless of whatever happens here. Oh, big ouch. Yeah, the guy's mad when his arms die. Um, here's the question. If I LB again, will this guy die? You know, I guess we're going to find out, aren't we? Um, so Kryla, we kind of do need a break again. So let's malicious. Let's... I don't know if we're broken or not, but we're going to go ahead and cure attack breaks just in case. Uh, and we can Eye of Doom to, like, try to kill this bro. Um, what are we doing with you? You will... Ardent. And, like, just some flame things or something. Yep, there it goes. Okay, so all missions that time. <laughs> Not all missions. We did it in, we did it, I think, in nine turns. Oof, big oof. Um, Kryla is now our passive provoker. Uh, she may have been in the previous run. I don't remember, honestly. I changed the gear around. Uh, some Esper fills. We can toss an Esper in every now and then. Um, Tome of Lakshmi. Yeah, she actually wasn't the provoker last run. Uh, so she can't dual cast anymore, but she can still heal, which is fine. Um, Aerith, you know, stop immunity. Then no real changes to her gear, I guess. There we go. Uh, Bigs and Wedge, no real changes here either. They're just, you know, uh, tanking, and they've got some resistances. And then Titus, cross Igon arm, um, you know, LB damage. I kind of, I you know, I tossed in some STMRs. I kind of try to avoid, like, the extreme STMRs. Um, I did use Eunice Necklace, full disclosure here, so I did use one premium STMR. So, you know, this is certainly not, like, technically a budget run, but it's cheaper. Uh, 225 LB, 250 Reaper, and 200 Machine. Yeah, you see, I, I prioritized Undead Killer a little bit higher than Machine Killer, because that Undead Wave is just oof, big oof. But, um, yeah, there is, over the course of two different clears, um, all missions, but it does take two clears to do it. So, that might be the end of my... I think I'm going to do one more video probably tomorrow. Anyway, there is another Fort Vorn. See you next time.